My name is Christy Busby, and you are about to listen to the next episode of my podcast called Fate, From Atheism to Enlightenment. So come on in, join me. We're going to talk about it all, from atheism to enlightenment. Alrighty, guys, here we go. Get ready, and welcome to your fate. And we're rolling. Welcome, everyone. On today's show, I am bringing you a wonderful woman. They call her Chaplain Jody. She is an intuitive and empath. She deals in all things angels. She has a podcast called Survivor Angels. It's all about healing, trauma. We're talking angels today on the show, gang. Welcome to your fate, Chaplain Jody. How are you doing today? I'm doing great now that I'm getting to talk to you. I mean, this is going to be a lot of fun. And of course, I, I love talking about angels. So let's do I this. am ready. I am ready. I'm super fascinated. I saw you on the podcast with Dave Schrader, who I'm a big fan of, and I wanted to get you on the show. And you said yes, and I'm very appreciative. So thank you so much for spending your time today. Let's get into it. Um I guess we should start with a little bit about your background. I'm very interested in your intuitive gifts and how you came about getting into the realm of dealing in the spiritual, the angelic. Can you tell me a little bit about how this all came about for you? Well, absolutely. I don't know if an hour is going to be enough time for that, but I'll give you the short version. (laughs) Um, I had my first angel experience at the age of three. I thought it was four. But then as, you know, I sit and reflect on things, um, all of a sudden, one day it clicked in my head. I think it was when I was three. Thankfully, my mom is still alive. She's 95 and she is as sharp as can be. And I didn't say a lot to her. I just kind of said, remember this, you know, situation. I think I was about three. What can you tell me about it? And so she told me what happened and she said, um, you had angels with you. And I was like, bingo. I wasn't, I wasn't wrong. So I had my first experience at the age of three. Now I know angels have been with me all my life. And some of the bigger times that they were with me, I knew it. But when you're a kid, you know, you just kind of breeze through life and you're all excited about this and about that. And your ego is this big And so, you know, you don't think a lot about it, except for those occasional times when you go, oh, that had to be an angel, had to be my guardian angel, had to be, you know, whatever the case was. So um, um, I am an ordained pastor and um, I was ordained almost 30 years ago. I have my Master of Divinity degree from Luther Seminary in St. Paul, Minnesota, Minneapolis, St. Paul. And so I have done parish church ministry. I was also a U.S. Army chaplain, and so that's that's kind of my professional ministry. But the thing that I appreciate most about that education is that it really taught me how to research, because this is a different kind of research than if you're doing history, because there's so many different facets that come into this. And of course, as I'm going through seminary, angels are popping up right and left and going, do you remember this situation? Do you remember this time? You know, all of this. And all of a sudden I started realizing that I had this whole thread running through my life that involved the angels. So, okay, fast forward to about 10 years ago and I started jotting all this down. Well, then now just not too long ago, it's like I'm supposed to be doing something with this because I'd stepped out of parish life and it's like, what is it? So I'm sitting there with the angels trying, you know, to hear the message that they're giving me again. And they said, well, you've been through enough trauma and life struggles and we're the ones who have been with you every single time and have brought you the messages that have guided you through. You need to show other people how they have the same thing in their life to help ease some of those times. It's not going to make those times go away and they have to do the work, but they need to know that we're there with them 
and we can help them and guide them and support them so they don't feel like they're all alone. There was born Survivor Angels. Wow. So that's how I got to that point. So I started with a daily blog and then people started saying, because what it, my first actual career in life was I was a broadcaster. Oh. And the first time I was in the military, I was a broadcast journalist out of the Pentagon during Vietnam. Oh um, and so it's like, this was kind of a real normal transition. They said, you got to do the podcast. And so daily blog, podcast, and the rest is history. That is amazing. When you say the uh, the angels come to you and they give you signs, how do they present? How, what do you feel? What do you see? Is it a, is it colors? Some people have, you know, different energetic feelings. How how do you know that it is your uh, your 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 angels that are that are trying to give you a sign? How can people tap into being able to interpret that kind of sign from an angel? Right. Uh, first of all, I will preface it by saying it's going to be different for everybody. And so I, I can tell you how I receive. Uh, it's going to be based on your clairs, like claircognizant, clairsentient, clair, you know, audience, all of that. So we all have two clairs that are stronger. Although I've been doing this so long, my clairs are all pretty balanced at this point. But I've also I also got a lot of years under my belt, too, here. And with the angels. So one thing that, and this is going to sound really weird. Um, all of a sudden you get that sort of little shiver and it's, it's not because you're cold, but you just, you know, whoa, um, that's Archangel Michael. Archangel Michael loves to give you, as my grandpa called it, a little willy. <laughs> I love my grandpa to death. Oh my God. He was, he was awesome. And I kind of didn't understand it when I was a kid, but I mean, as an adult, then it's like, now I totally get it. Um, Michael will also present himself as a really warm, comforting feeling. And so if, um, if you get that, it's again, that's going to be Archangel Michael. Now, all the angels can present based on their aura colors. So it can be that all of a sudden you're seeing a specific color in signs and on television, whatever the case might be, all of a sudden you're looking at dishes and this one, you know, color keeps popping up. Each one, again, has their own specific aura color and that's the one that's trying to come through to you. Now, it might not be the archangel themselves, but one that's in their army that they're sending. I get them as waves of color or sparkles. Oh, wow. Um, when I was at Hellfire Castle in Ireland, uh, which is notoriously haunted and filled with evil, um, at first the angels wouldn't let me go in. They kept stopping me at the windows and at the doors. And my husband's like, what is wrong with you? And I said, angels are telling me, don't go, don't go. And he said, well, tell them to protect you. He knows now what to say to me. <laughs> and uh, and so I did. You know, I, I took a moment and, you know, I, I called him in in light and love. And I said, OK, guys, I need protection. Now, that's another thing. You don't pray to the angels. They're not God. They're not gods. You just talk to them like you and I are talking. And so I said, OK, I'm, I'm getting the pushback here. I can tell you you don't want me to go in, but I feel like I need to go in for a reason. So just surround me with your protection. I will listen for your messages, but I know I need to go in here. So I was able to go in and we walked around to quite a few of the rooms and we went up to the second level. I actually have a picture of this that our photographer, professional photographer who was with our group, she took the picture and I was in the room and I looked up and I just, I swept my hand like that. And th there they were, I mean, visible to the human eye. She caught two of them in the picture. Oh, and they were sparkles. I know it just, it gave me the chills. And she was like, oh my gosh, I hope I just got that. And sure enough, she did. I mean, it was, it was incredible. Now you can get them, you know, through your hearing. I've had them call me by name, which that's very rare. Uh, but that was a time where I was all by myself. There was no noise around me. And I just heard Jody. And I checked the house. 
I'm the only one home. And yeah, so it was it was the angel. But usually the way I get it is a ringing in my ear. Now, I have tinnitus from the military. I have learned to tell if it's my tinnitus or if it's the angels. And there is a clear difference. If you get it in your right ear, it's the angels who are coming to enlighten love. If you get it in your left ear, look out because that's going to be a fallen angel who has ulterior motives with their message. The message might seem like it's all warm and wonderful, giving you advice and direction, but that's where you've got to sort through it to see what the intent is. And that's where my communication background has come in so well, because I, I have learned a long time now how to do that. But the other piece, I think a lot of us now know how to tell when it's fake news and when it's real news. I think we all gotten pretty savvy with it. So, you know, but I still want to caution people, look for the intent behind the message because the fallen angels come all dressed up, all pretty and nice, and they will fool you. They are tricksters. Um, because in fact, the, the angels that come in light and love are really, if you read the descriptions of them from the ancient texts and scriptures and everything, they're not pretty at all. They're kind of scary looking. Even the good angels are scary looking. Interesting. Yes. So that the, the old, yes. yeah. the old wings and beautiful, perfect vision that you get when you presented with that the typical image of what we think is not at all what they are, in fact, what they really look like. Now, they, they can manifest themselves like that at this point in time because that's who we as humans recognize them as. But that's where the fallen angels can do it as well. That look comes from our 16th and 17th century artists who started depicting angels that way. Um, angels can also manifest to us as as human beings. Um, I have countless stories on my podcast where people will tell how there was this person there that said to them, stop or look out. And of course, as they turned to see what, it was something that would have caused them immediate harm. And when they look back, that person is gone. Oh, that just gave me chills. And of course, people, yeah. And they'll say even with their pets. So angels can manifest themselves any way that they choose to. And of course, they're going to come to us in ways that we're comfortable with because if they come to us in the ways that they're described in the ancient texts and scriptures, they're they're not they're ugly. Let's let's just spit it out. <laughs> they are ugly. Yeah. Fascinating. When you talk about the tricksters, the lower dimensional, the fallen angels. I have heard that there there are people out there that do get negative entities attached to them. How do you know if you have a negative entity attached to you? How do you get rid of a negative entity attached to you? Do you have any experience with doing so or any kind of stories that you could tell dealing with um, these fallen angels and what they what their what is their mission? Is it just to cause pain, suffering or what? Can you tell us a little bit about what that looks like when, when you're dealing with the, the lower vibrational fallen angels? Mm -hmm. Right. That was, that was kind of a lot of, like a lot of oh, questions. Oh, yeah. So I'm I'll sorry. I'm a chatty of... Kathy. Sorry. No, and it's fine because it, it all ties together. So it, it's good. Um, first of all, what, what the fallen angels do, they, of course, are messengers too. And they want you to get off track of what your life purpose is. And they, so they will give you messages that will derail you in any way possible. And if it means to suck the ever living life out of you so that you get sick, you know, or your attitude turns negative, whatever the case might be, they are going to try to do that. How do you get rid of them? And then I'll get to a really good story. Um, there's a lot of different ways. You, I always recommend if you really think that it's it's a negative energy that's that's latched on, you call in other people that are filled with positivity and light and love and let them help you to do it. You can do it with sage. Uh, you can do it through a, a joint meditation sort of piece. When we were in Ireland, the last time that we were there, we went with Dave Schrader and a group. 
And Dave only lives 20 minutes from uh, me. Oh, I mean, I, I always say, you, you live in my backyard. <laughs> Got a lot of love for him. He's a wise man. He is deep well of wisdom. Very yep. wise. Well, we were at Lep Castle in Ireland, and my husband and I had been there the first time that we were there with just a few little minor things that happened. But this time we're with our tour group and we're with an Irish paranormal group who was helping to lead the investigation. So we were on the second floor. That investigation was pretty much standard fare. But then we went up to the Bloody Chapel and I knew very well what the Bloody Chapel was about. And I did, even before I set foot in Left Castle, I called in the Angels for Protection based on the Hellfire Club and based on the reputation of Left Castle. And so we get up there. And of course, as we're coming up, you know, the the winding stone castle steps that are how many centuries old, I could feel the air getting heavier. When you get up there, there's no windows on that upper floor. It's like the old medieval Renaissance castles, however you want to think of them. So the paranormal group had us form a circle and we did. And they started talking to the spirits and they had a channeler who's part of their team. And the channeler said, the woman with the white scarf. I was the only woman with a white scarf on. And it was a big white scarf. So there was there was no mistaking who it was. One of those warm wool winter ones because it was cold up there. Um, he said, you are being asked to step to the center of the circle. Now, my husband is a bit of an empath too. And he was just going to say, don't. And I was already in the center. And so I'm standing there and all of a sudden I started doing one of these circular motions. I, I, it, was, it wasn't intentional. I, something was having me do this and I could tell that my mind was leaving that room and I could tell that it wasn't good. And so the paranormal team said, Get her out of the circle now. And they did. They took me out. At this point now, the wind had doubled in its its wind speed. It was howling. It sounded like a banshee, you know, or her a banshee, an army of banshees, whatever they're called, around that upper floor. Um, it was quite surreal. And so I went and sat over on uh, one of the window ledges, and my husband came and sat with me, and Dave came and sat with me too, as well as our, our tour guide. And they said I was ice cold. Now, I didn't feel cold. I mean, it, that I sensed that I was cold, but they said I was just like ice and I was shaking. I didn't, I didn't know that. So they kind of finished, the rest of the group finished the investigating. And Dave said to me, he said, are you, are you okay now? I said, no. I said, I'm, I'm not myself. I said, I don't know what's going on. He said, what do you want us to do? I said, I need everybody to, to form a circle around me. And I said, I need everybody to lay their hands on me. And if they can't actually touch me, to touch a person who is touching me. And so then I led them through a meditation then to clear me. And I got done and Dave said, better? And I hesitated for a minute and I said, no, it's, it's still there. He said, we need to get you out of here. We need to get you out of the bloody chapel. And I, I said, yes. And I said, the only thing is, I said, I said, I need somebody really big to walk down these steps ahead of me because I am very lightheaded. Well, of course, you know, Dave's a big guy. Dave's a big guy. <laughs> so Dave went down ahead of me and my husband was right behind me because I was, I was still sort of doing this, you know, whole circular thing. So we got downstairs and they sat me by the fire because they said I still felt cold to the touch. And again, I didn't sense that that cold. And they brought me water and we sat there and Sean Ryan, you know, he's well-known professional Irish musician. He owns Lep Castle, sat and played, you know, some, some music for us and everything, and did pictures. And it was time for us to leave. Dave says, are you better? I said, no, it's, it's still there. He said, let's get you out of here. So, of course, we said our goodbyes. We walked out of the castle door. As soon as I cleared that doorway, bam, I was fine. Wow. I was completely fine. And, and 
and my husband could tell because he was sort of guiding me by my arm. And he's like, you cleared it, didn't you? And I said, yeah. I said, it's gone. And Dave heard that. And he turned around and he goes, you're okay now, aren't you? And I said, yeah. I said, I'm okay. But that's not the end of the story. So about a week later, we get back home and the tour guide calls me and she said, the paranormal team needs to talk to you because they are going to tell you the backstory to what happened to you. And I'm thinking, backstory? Okay. So, okay. So call, I talk to them and I'm like, okay, we, we've got to get this on the podcast. So one of my podcasts, they are on and they retell this story. But um, the week before we were there, they had another group investigating and they had a gentleman there who was also a pastor. He got called to the center of the circle through the channeler and he barely stepped into the center where his arms shot straight above his head and he was lifted off the floor and he was screaming in pain. They thought they were going to have to call an ambulance for him and they finally got the dark entity to release him. Oh, my God. Hey, now they didn't call the ambulance, but I mean, there were at least a dozen people that were witness to this. And so I said to the paranormal team, Shelly and Quiva, I said, so what was it? And they said, first of all, it was the murdered priest that was protecting you. And for whatever reason, the minister the week before wasn't afforded that protection because there is a very dark entity that lives in the ovulette of Lep Castle that was trying to suck me in. Oh, that is an incredible story. Oh my God. It really makes you think about, you know, we go through our lives every day without thinking about angels, spirits, energy, we're going to work, we're, we're living these lives without ever encountering anything like that. And when you hear these stories, it really makes you reflect on the fact that there really is so much going on within our environment that we're not seeing, we're not hearing, we, we are not tapping into what our energy is feeling like moment to moment. And kind of leads me to the question, like, what do you think the nature of our reality is here? It, 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 it's a question that I often ask people on this podcast because I feel that we are much more, um, I think we are beings of light that are in this avatar kind of body and we are all much more um, energy based than we are physically based. And, and I'd love to hear your take on the nature of reality on this planet. What do you think, Chaplain Jody? <laughs> mm. Well, so many people say that we're a body with a soul. And I, I'm not the only one now who says this. I believe we are a soul with a body. Our bodies die, yes. right? Our souls are energy. They are pure energy. They are pure light and love, just like the angels are pure light and love. And just like the angels... We have free will. Angels have free will, which a lot of people go, wait, what? But they do. They have free will, which is why you have fallen angels, because they chose to be rebels and go this direction where the other angels chose to stay where they were created to be. Um, and so all of this is energy based, which is why when people see angels, you know, there's even if it's a person. If you are open to it, you will see their aura, whether it's an angel manifesting or whether it's like us, you know, human beings that are bodies with souls, um, you know, you will see the auras. People, psychic mediums tell me all the time, oh, your aura is pink, which I know because my archangel is Chamuel and Chamuel's aura, aura is pink. Um, but you can, you can start to see that with people. You might only see it for a second sometimes because you go, oh, Wait, what, you know, what was, what was that? Um, but no, it's true. And there is such a connectivity 
with everything in our creation and universe. I know I had uh, one podcaster uh, ask me from Ireland. I just did a podcast with him yesterday. He said, so how many universes are there out there? I said to infinity and beyond. I, I said, yep, no one has any way of knowing. We maybe never will. And so then when you start talking, you know, angels come in realms according to texts and scripture and everything. And supposedly that there's seven of them. Well, and people will say that we're in the third dimension, which the angels are here with us. And the we're actually in the fourth dimension because what people fail to remember is we have height, width, depth, and time. People forget the time piece. And that's where you start getting, oh, the deja vu, the glitch in the matrix, the time slips, the time lapse, all of those things. And so how all of our reality is, I think, is completely different than what true reality is. And so, therefore, then you can start talking about, you know, the UFOs and the aliens and how, you know, angels come through and all of that, you know, shapeshifters and I, it's all connected and it's connected for a reason because my thought is, is that we aren't all meant to see the same things the same ways because that keeps us just slightly off balance and not getting all of the answers. And, and that makes all of this even more interesting. It, it really is fascinating. I'm kind of new to the game of the spiritual aspect of life in general. I had to go through my own sort of healing, which led me onto this path of awakening in a way. And I'm still um, asking a lot of questions and trying to figure out what my own core belief system, where that lies and what my truth is. But it's interesting you mentioned aliens because that was kind of going to be my next question is dimensions, aliens. I I am starting to firmly believe that there are definitely not only uh, other beings out there, but there are other beings out there that look a lot like us that are alien-like, that are not of this planet, that we don't recognize, we don't acknowledge, we don't talk about. And if you do, people look at you like you're maybe a little bit touched in the head. But I find it very hard to believe that our little blue planet in this huge ginormous universe that is never ending to our knowledge, that we are the only ones that exist, that have intelligence, that have technology, that are among us. And I'm Wondering what your thoughts are when they die, do we all go into the same realm? Every species in the universe is of the same domain. What are your what do you think about that strange question? No, it's it's not strange at all. It's getting asked more and more because the veil is getting thinner. Everybody is opening up more to all of this, although you still have a lot of naysayers out there, but that's okay. They'll, they'll get on board here at some point. Um, I, I do, as I said, I believe everything is connected. And if you look at the different religions and what they believe about the afterlife, just starting with religions, um, the Arabic religions, uh, Islam and some of those, um, lesser ones than Islam, I'm not going to sit here and name them all, um, they believe that afterwards there is these different levels of the soul that they go through. Could be. And then, of course, Christianity believes that Bible contradicts itself. Old Testament says you go to this place and you wait for a while. New Testament says, nope, it's immediate boom. Then there is, um, oh, shoot, and I'm going to forget which one it is. Uh, but there's another religion, and it escapes me at the moment that believes you just go to this place of total darkness. Mm -hmm. I think all of this is going to be the same place. And so it's just a matter of how in our reality we view things because we are all energy. The aliens are energy, just like we are energy. You know, the Yeti, the Bigfoots, the Sasquatch, you know, the fairies, the leprechauns. Anything like that that you want to talk about 
it's all energy based. And they say, well, it's folklore, it's mythology. I believe that somebody saw something at some point in time that it was real. And of course, way back when, all they could do is pass it down verbally through stories. Yep. And so it became just that stories. And so, yes, um, as far as, you know, I, I believe that there's other, you know, dimensions, there's other planetary systems, there's other universes, whatever you want to call all of that. They might look exactly like ours. They might look completely different. But the ultimate piece is, is they are going through their lives like we are going through our lives with highs and lows and challenges and good times and bad times because it is going to help prepare them for where we are all ultimately going to end up. And will we all end up there at the same time? I don't know. Like, oh, it's going to be just like this massive welcome home party. <laughs> <laughs> I'm let's hope. Let's hope. Um, what do you, what's the difference between a spirit guide and an angel? Is it the same? Because I, you know, I'm hearing that we all have spirit guides with us, that we never walk alone on this plane, that there are always our, our guides are with us. Is that the same thing as archangels or are they different or what are your thoughts on that? Some people in the paranormal are not going to like me when I say this because some of them have looked at me and said, really, Jody, when I said this, is I believe that our spirit guides are our guardian angels. They are part of the armies that come from under the archangels. My spirit guide or guardian angel is Bridger. I thought it was Bridget initially because they presented themselves to me as this woman with beautiful, long flowing red hair. And of course, my Irish people say, oh, she, she was Irish. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I rest on sitting next to this stone fireplace like it was back in the 14, 1500s. Um, and so I thought it was Bridget, of course, but then kept, it kept coming through. What I was really getting was just bridge, bridge. And it finally it said Bridger. But at the same time, the message they were bringing me was that I was to bridge between the angels and the human realm, that that is part of my purpose, which was really cool and really took me aback. And I'm just like, that's a really tall order. Whoa. Yeah. And so just like spirits, I believe that spirits are not actually deceased loved ones or friends or whoever who have passed, I believe that it's the angels manifesting in their form, in their likeness, because that's going to be familiar to us. So we won't be afraid because the angels want to bring us some kind of message. Because you'll hear people say, well, grandma told me this, you know, and, and my dad told me this. I believe it's really the angels that are bringing the messages because I've read in a few different places um, and different sources, of course, that spirits, um, when we pass as spirits, we really sort of go mentally into this, I'm going to call it brain fog, where we're just kind of, la, 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 <laughs> and not really paying a lot of attention, except we're in a happy place kind of thing. And that's another reason why I really believe that that's angels coming through. That rather than the spirit guides. Okay. What if, um, do bad people have angels? Like people that are, you know, there's plenty of people that are not doing out there doing amazing things. They're, you know, whether they're criminals, whether they're, sex trafficking you know there's there's pe there's people that are not doing love and light work that don't have good intentions for others do those people also have angels that are with them that are helping them or or are would you say in your experience those those are the people that have succumbed to like the a fallen angel uh guide what i'm i'm always curious because from what i understand we all end up in the same place and we all, our core, our love, we're compassion, we are unconditional beings of love. And I always 
I know that there's polarity out there. There's good, there's bad, there's up, there's down. But it's all, it's a fascinating question to me that, you know, there's, there's, there's no shortage of people out there that probably don't have the best intentions for others. And who are their spirit guides and how does that happen in your opinion? Right. Um, right now I did the, I dropped the first p- podcast last Sunday. The second one drops tomorrow. And, uh, although we're recording this, so this is going to be a little off yep. schedule, but it's, it's called soul parts one, two, and three. And it goes back to our soul. You've heard the terms soulful, soul filled, tortured soul, soulless. So I talk about all those things. And so what you're talking about there is like the tortured souls, but really the soul less. And I don't believe that they don't have a soul, but they've lost track of their soul. They pushed it down for some reason. It might be because of trauma. It might be because no one um, really gave them any kind of, should I say, guidance to be open to messages. Like, you know, people will say intu- intuition or those gut feelings. They don't even call it angels, which I believe intuition and gut feelings is the angels. Um, and they poo poo that stuff. And so they kind of quit listening to those messages. And instead, they're listening to a lot of negativity. That's what they're pulling in is all these negative things. And it might be because um, they've grown up in a bad situation, whether it's at home or it's at school. Maybe they were being bullied or bullies. Why do bullies bully? Um, a good friend of mine who's a psychotherapist, her and I just did a whole course on on my my school on Teachable on bullies. It's for parents and kids. And we talk about both for the bully, what to do, and for the person who's being bullied, because the bully needs just as much help as the person who's being bullied. And so it's it's one of those things you would go back to product of our environment. That's an old phrase that's, what, like 30, 40 years old yep. now at this point. Uh, but it's it's so true. And that's why right now I look at our cultures and our societies that are just all about negativity and hate. And it's like a lot of, a lot of soul is kind of going towards the, you know, the drain here. And we need to start you know, lifting those frequencies and getting those energies and, and positivity levels back up um, because it's not going to end well otherwise. I mean, it's, it's that simple. Yeah. And you don't have to have, I mean, you don't have to have a religious center at all. Uh, you know, if you just have, you know, the spirituality of where you believe that there is something more than what's here, um, I don't care what you believe in and how that looks, but if you have that belief, I mean, I even look at atheists and they say, well, I don't believe in anything. I say, well, yes, you do. You believe in nothing. Nothing is something. I mean, I was in that category for most of my life. I grew up in the church with my, you know, my family. It, I never, I never understood religion. It never spoke to me. Maybe it was the church I was in. Maybe I'm not quite sure, but I was a staunch atheist. With an amazing heart, I love everybody. I want everyone to succeed. I want everyone to do well. I want us all to live our best lives. But at the same time, my I got a degree in science. I believed in evolution. I believed if you couldn't see it, touch it, taste it, feel it, didn't exist. I believed that we that the planet is a body of life and it is like a tree. We grow up, we die, we go back to the earth and that kind of life cycle. And anything beyond that was just wishful thinking, gang. But I, I no longer believe that at all. I, I, I am much more into frequency, vibration. I believe our belief systems dictate a lot about what happens on our exterior reality. I think that whatever you're re- resonating with vibrationally, that is what the universe is going to show you. And I think that you can feel the negative energy in the planet these days. You can, it, it just feels different. People are not, um, I think of, there's so many people living in lack and despair. They're lost. They don't have, it's, it's getting harder and harder and harder to manage a safe, sustainable life on this planet. 
and you're having people resorting to all kinds of things, whether it be drugs, alcohol. Um, there's so many coping, coping mechanisms that we use now to deal with our pain. Everybody's dealing with emotional pain. And one of the reasons why I'm kind of out here talking about this is because I do feel like if people understood more that if they lived more consciously and paid attention to what their emotions are, instead of just feeling their emotions and reacting, being like, maybe what is this trying to teach me right now? This bad incident that happened, this feeling that I'm having, what does this mean? And, and being a little bit more conscious of where, where we're, we're vibrating, you could start to turn it around and it will show up on the outside if you kind of tune into your inside and start really paying attention to where you're resonating. Because if you're resonating in fear, which we are getting pumped with fear on a daily basis, so much fear and um, negativity amongst towards each other, towards there's the divisions that are happening within our society where we're just broken up into our little groups. There's no connectivity. Social media, we don't talk to each other anymore. We're staring at screens. It seem, it feels very dystopian to me. It feels like we are going off a cliff that we're not going to be able to pull ourselves back from unless people start thinking, feeling, and understanding that we truly are all connected. And there mm -hmm. is no other right. way that we should be um, addressing our society. But with that key thought in mind, we are all fellow travelers to the grave. We are here temporary. We all perceive our realities differently. And instead of focusing on what yeah. makes us different, we need to start focusing on our commonalities because that is, that's the only yeah. way we are going to be able to turn this ship around is stop focusing on what makes us different because we are so much more alike than we will ever be different. That's right. Preaching to the choir here. I mean, that's 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 my heart. Every you just said. I mean, what it, it's interesting. You brought up the emotions piece because on June first, uh, we're hosting an event here in Minneapolis. It's called Celebration: Surviving Our Emotional Storms. Mm -hmm. And so, and this is this is my inside humor. Um, my friend, who's a psychotherapist, will be there. Another good friend of mine, who's a psychic medium, will be there. Of course, I'm a pastor, so I said we have a cycle with psychic and a pastor. <laughs> walk into a but we're also going to have a music therapist and a dance therapist and a yoga and meditation teacher and who's going to talk about chakras and crystals and regenerative wellness professional and also a medical professional who went through an incredibly traumatizing time in her life as a medical professional who will be talking about getting through suicide and grief on its I mean, when you hear what she's been through and she's a survivor, because uh, I believe that once you're past a situation, you are no longer a victim, which that's another piece. We have to get past the victim mentality. We are all survivors unless we're stuck in a situation. And so we're doing that on June 1st here in, in Minneapolis because you're right. Emotions are such a key piece of this. And fear right now is the number one emotion that has risen to the top. But I have to ask you a question. Where do you live in California? I, I, I live in Hollywood. Right. Yes. Well, the reason I ask is because Labor Day weekend, August 30th and 31st up at Mount Shasta, oh. psychic medium Sarah Lemos and I are doing a retreat that is going to blow everybody out of the water. It is going to be so cool. You should come up for it. I absolutely. And any of your listeners from California. Yes, I absolutely. Yeah, count me in. Should. I will be there once we get off um, our little show here. I'll get more details, but I'm there. Consider, consider me in. Like, this is kind All of, right. awesome. you know, this is the direction that I, that is pull. I'm getting pulled in this direction. Uh, if you want to say in, intuition, spirit guides, whatever, this is, this is my, this is the direction I'm getting pulled in. And so I'm, I'm more and more wading into spirituality, energy, healing, you know, meditation, manifestation, all of that 
to me is super intriguing, fascinating. And that's kind of what I'm talking about on the podcast all the time. And yep. it, it, it is, you know, it is, you start, the more you start listening to other people talk, the more you start stepping out of the matrix that we're kind of all in and understanding that we are much bigger, much more powerful. And there was, there's much more to us than what we think about. But everybody is just trying to survive. We're in survival mode out there. Nobody has time to reflect and they're on, on what, what their sole purpose is or what makes them truly happy or what really gives them peace and contentment. We are just trying to get on the wheel of the rat race and, and keep our heads above water and I don't see that right. getting any better. Yeah, and, yeah and, and the really cool piece is um, so much of, of culture and society is turned inward. Yeah. Once you start opening up to your your fellow yeah. companions yes. on this journey, shall we say, yes. and everything, you never turn back inward. You keep that outward focus, and that alone makes your life better. Yeah. Because you're not dwelling on, oh, woe is me, and oh, poor me, and all of this. Instead, you're like, I can help you with this, and I know a way that we can do this. And you can just feel the energy rise when that starts to happen. I agree. And it's great. It brings a huge smile to your face. It does. I Through this podcast and talking to people, and I've talked to a lot of people who have like near-death experience, and they've come back with gifts, or they've come back with this completely different um, set of eyeballs because they've understood truly that when you die, that magic happens and that maybe we should talk about dying more is less of an ending and more of a transition. And there's so much fear around death. And one of the things that I've been losing through my journey and getting on the spiritual path is the level of fear that I have. I no longer think this is it for me. I don't feel like death is going to be the end. I will transition. I am a being of light. I am energy and I am eternal. So are you. So are you. So are you. So are we all. And I think that yeah. if you took the fear out of dying, this, it, it, it could really change the consciousness of the, our, 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 our reality at the end of the day. You know? Right. Yeah. It, this, is, this is kind of like our prep time. Yeah. To get everything figured out, get everything sorted out. And then we're going to step into this this next point in our life, the next phase, whatever you want to call it. And it's like, okay, now everything makes sense. And that's why I learned to do this and I learned about that. And it's like, you can just sit back and enjoy at that point. And also, one of the reigning themes that I'm getting from people when they understand the nature of our connection is we are here to be of service to others. We are here to help. We are here to serve and be of assistance to everyone. And everybody that I've talked to, they've gone from working like in a corporate environment to having one of these life-changing experiences to coming back and having this newfound purpose of, I want to serve others. That's what gives me joy. That is my purpose. And it's been really amazing to talk to people and get their stories. And I'm going to continue to do it until... Until I'm not. Why don't we take a few minutes and talk Good. about your Survivor Angels podcast and how that got started and how, what, what's the mission and um, how are you healing people through your, your podcast land? I love my Survivor Angels. <laughs> I've watched. It's because amazing. The, the, thank you. Um, the funny thing is it, is it has been just as therapeutic for me to be doing it as what it's been for the people that I've connected with through it, whether it's on the podcast or whether it's I'm out at a community event, you know, whatever the case is. Um, the Survivor Angels in a nutshell, the way I describe it, is it's a unique approach that supports and lifts up people who struggle with life or have experienced trauma. That's it in a nutshell, which nowadays that's probably 99.9% .9 of humanity. People are for everywhere. Yeah. We're, never, we're not getting out of here without late. trauma. I can tell you that. <laughs> right. Yes. And so 
the piece of it then that makes it the unique approach is the angel piece. And so through the blog and through, you know, the podcast, um, I show people how the angels are there with them, how they can be recognizing them by having other people tell their stories of how they know that the angels are there with them and guide them in everything. So it's not just me. They are hearing it from many, many different voices and many different situations and many different times and places at everything because I've got young and old, I've got famous and not famous. Um, so they realize that this is about everybody. And I know I get so many people that will, you know, quick send me a message or a text or something and say, I needed that today. Well, like all my daily blogs are what the angels tell me to write. And so it's like, they're telling me somebody needs this message. And so that's what I write. I know which angel is bringing me that message because I know what their skill sets. That's kind of a weird thing to say about angels, but it's kind of, it's not really a skill set. It's their, their focus. I should call it their focus because they all have their individual focus um, to keep things spread out. That doesn't mean that they don't overlap, but it's just, it's kind of a nice, neat way of compartmentalizing them. And it was probably some human thing that somebody did you know, that, that put them like that. But I, I learned something every single time that I talk to somebody new. And when I'm out doing community events and paracons and everything, I say to people when they come to my table, cause they, you know, they want to ask about me and I'm like, I want to ask about you. Have you had an angel experience? And if they say yes, I say, then you've got to come on my podcast. And a lot of times I'll do the interview right then and there with them. And then, you know, I'll edit when I get home. Other times they're like, well, I need to get in to hear that speaker. And it's like, fine, understand, leave me your email address. We'll connect and we'll get it done like you and I are doing here today. But it just, it, it expands that ring. I always say, and it's, it's an really old kind of cliche thing but it's like dropping that pebble in a pond and you see the rings of the water just go out and out and out and it's it's enlightening and it's uplifting and um my husband has gotten to the point where he says to me now you never stop smiling why is that and i'm like because i'm in my happy place i i am you know, hearing all these people's stories, they're sharing all of them with me and with the world. And I said, you can't help but feel good when you hear about this stuff. I know when I was on, well, on Dave's podcast the last time, I know one one of the gentlemen that was listening, he said, well, this is just chicken soup for the soul with angels. I said, call it what you want, if that resonates for you. But if if you're saying it to make fun of this, I said, just remember, for some people, chicken soup of the soul is a big deal for them, and that helps them get through a day. And so, you know, you can't poo-poo this stuff because for a lot of people, this is what gets to their heart. And the heart is where the soul is. They say the brain is where the soul is. I disagree. Your heart is where your soul is. And that's what all of this does is it comes around and it goes into the heart. And then it comes back out of the heart. I agree. And I also think that sometimes trauma is going to lead to our greatest healing. It's going to really be the thing that opens your heart. It's going to be really the thing that opens your mind. Because if you are in a situation where you're experiencing a traumatic situation and your normal ways of coping are no longer serving you, you start to look elsewhere to get help and to get and seek answers and to heal And it opens your mind enough to allow the concept of angels, to allow the concept that maybe we are bigger, better, greater species than what we just think we are. And without that trauma, sometimes people don't get the nudge in life to explore that avenue so that you can open up to a new way of thinking, feeling, and living you know, it, 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 it can be your greatest height and your lowest low at the same time. It really can. Um, right. How can people activate their angels? What's your, what, what do you, how, what would you, what do you think? So if, if you, 
aren't sure if you've ever experienced angels before. Think about when you've had those gut feelings, you know, that that little inner voice that has said something, you know, yeah, maybe you shouldn't go this direction. Uh, don't talk to that person, you know, anything like that. Stop and think about those moments and then just sit with that. And I mean, literally sit, sit outside, especially if you can get outside and get yourself grounded and just close your eyes and think about all of those times, but you will actually start to feel yourself open. Um, and then start talking to your angels. You don't have to talk out loud. Sometimes I talk out loud. Sometimes I talk in my head. It doesn't matter, but always preface with in light and love. You don't have to know who your guardian angel is. You don't have to know who your archangel is because that is not the reason for your angels. It's the message that they're bringing you. That is their sole purpose. And so don't sweat that small stuff. It's not a big deal. But the more you open yourself, eventually it will come to you. And then you'll be going, woo woo. That's, you know, that's like the sweet spot then at, at, at that point. But the other thing is, is angels come to you at night when you sleep. And so what I do first thing in the morning is before I open my eyes, is I lay there for a minute and I use my third eye, which of course is that that darkness that's there. And I look to see if they've given me anything at night or if I remember a dream. I try to remember what the dream was because in the dream there's a message or if they show me like a form or a word looking using my third eye, it's like, okay, there. this is what they've given me. And maybe I need to sit with that to figure it out a little bit more or just carry it with me for the day. Because at some point, it's I'm going to know why. There will be some mornings that when you wake up, you don't get anything. And so they're just going, have a nice day. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, it's just it's a matter of taking that time. That's really what it is. How can people listen to your podcast? Can you tell everybody how they can get in touch and and listen and start becoming a fan of the show? Yep, absolutely. Um, it's called Survivor Angels, and it's on YouTube, it's on Spotify, it's on iHeart, but basically wherever you watch or listen to podcasts, you should be able. And so, even if you just Google Survivor Angel Podcast your choices are, are going to pop up. And then I'm on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook. And my website is chaplainjody.me. And as long as we're talking about this, my first book is already oh. out. It's called Angel Trippin', okay. Your Guide to um, Angel Adventures. It's on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble, and it's available in 14 countries. And the second one, which is due out... In the next couple of weeks, it's at my publisher and she just has to finish it up. And then I'm writing the third one, which I'm really excited about because listen to the podcast on the soul, because it's a book that expands on everything with the soul and the angels, because the angels are the protectors of your soul. What a beautiful way to wrap up our episode today. Chaplain Jody, I can't thank you enough. I really enjoyed our conversation. I'm going to be watching True. and listening to your podcast. And I hope to have you on again. You are a wealth of information. I was fascinated and I really appreciate you taking the time to be with me today. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Jody, check out her show wherever you get your podcast or on YouTube. And if you've had an angel experience, feel free to reach out. She'd love to have you on the show and we'd love to hear your story. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap on this episode of Faith from Atheism to Enlightenment. We'll see you next week. Take care, everybody. Bye. All righty, guys. That was Talking Angels with Chaplain Jody Dane. I can't tell you how much I enjoyed our conversation. Please check out her podcast, Survivor Angels. It's on Apple, Google, you name it. It's out there. It's well worth a listen. Highly recommendable. I absolutely enjoyed her energy. I thought that she was an amazing guest. And I really, really hope that I can get her back on the show at some point. Turns out I've already booked my trip to Mount Chasta. 
in August. So I will be joining her up there on her retreat and I'm really looking forward to it. You know, it's um, quite a transition for me to even sit down and have a conversation with somebody named Chaplain Jody since, you know, even five years ago, I would never have even entertained such a thing. So it's kind of remarkable to see even my own transformation and how much I'm opening up to um, perspectives that I never would have entertained in my earlier years of life. And it's been exciting and I love it. I am really enjoying the process of doing this podcast. I'm enjoying the process of talking to people about their life stories, whether they be near-death experiences, whether it be delving into the divinity, energy healing. I find all of it to be intriguing. I'm learning and I'm still trying to figure out where I lie within the whole realm of spirituality and what my real beliefs are, but I think they're starting to kind of come together in a certain way. Uh, I'm going to keep doing this and having conversations and bringing them to you. And I'm hoping you continue to listen and enjoy them. And maybe I'm opening your mind and changing your perspectives on some things. At the end of the day, that's the goal, just to kind of open your mind to a different way of walking in the world that kind of takes you out of the mainstream bubble that we all find ourselves in every day. I know that I'm going to pay more attention to whether or not I'm getting goosebumps or when, or if I'm getting any signs or what am I thinking the first thing I wake up in the morning? Did I get some sort of message overnight? I do think the more I trot down this spirituality and I start to learn I am more and more and more under the impression that there really is a very complex um, set of parameters in which we all are swimming in. And I am excited to learn more about it and hope I'll bring you, I'll bring it to you as I learn. I will keep bringing you uh, people that will hopefully touch your curiosity and change you and open you up in a way that you haven't been able to open up to before. So on that note, guys, uh, next week, I am bringing you a gentleman. Um, his name is Larry Eisler III. He kind of dabbles in the paranormal, former atheist like myself that has turned into the spiritual realm. And we actually have a really interesting conversation about uh, the nature of reality. He's got some great stories about paranormal, interdimensional stuff. Fascinating discussion. I really enjoyed it. I hope you tune in next week for that episode. Please check out Angel Trippin on Amazon. Get, get Chaplain Jody's book. She is um, someone to watch out for. I think that she has a great energy and I really hope that she touches as many people as she possibly can in the world because it can only do good things. Uh, other than that, guys, if you want to follow this show, I am on Instagram. It's at fate podcast, all lowercase F period, a period, T period, E period podcast. Listen to my show on my fate YouTube channel. It's at fate and um, subscribe, like, share. I'd like to start getting this out to as many people out there as I possibly can and continue to do this. I'm really enjoying the process. I'm hoping you're enjoying it as well. Uh, certainly not every single one of my shows is um, knocks it out of the park, but I do always try to ask intelligent questions and bring you people that I think are fascinating and interesting to listen to. So if you have suggestions, hit me up and let me know on Insta or whatever. I would love if you have a near-death experience, if you went from an atheist to being a spiritual person, if you have a story to tell, I'd love to have you on the show. I am interested in human stories that bring um, wonder and a different different way to look at the world. So on that, guys, I'm going to leave it there. 
We will see you next week on Faith from Atheism to Enlightenment. My name's Christy Busby, and I hope to see you there. Welcome to your fake gang. Bye.